Christmas stuff going well, you on. Know where they, you know where they all lived across the bow, don't you? Uh, well, you know, just kind of, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have you, uh, uh, walk me through where some of these folks lived here. I'm going to get my little jingle bells off and make too much noise. I remember <laughs> Mr. Walker had a Surrey, the uh -huh. only one that was in the country. Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I do. A Surrey. Okay, I do know. All right, let's let's see. I'm gonna get started. Okay, this uh, this is Patricia, and well, you and May and I are uh, recording again, and uh, it's uh, the last uh, day in August, two thousand and seven, uh, and she's gonna tell me some more about my grandpa Walker. So she's gonna talk about a Surrey. So go ahead and tell about that. About what? About the Surrey. Go ahead and tell about that. Well. Uh, Ed Walker's the only one in the community that had a Surrey. And I could just remember they had come to church and they would be inside and the rest of us had to come in an open wagon, you know, or an open buggy. We might, now, Grandpa had a buggy mm -hmm. with the top. You know that old, <laughs> they used when we was kids, somebody to say, if you had a buggy top, what would you want next? And of course, we wanted a fine comb to comb the bugs out of her hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you'd want next. <laughs> Tell about uh, going to uh, uh, Ed Walker's for the party, the play party. Oh, we went up there to the play party and we decided, they decided we was going to play Kiss the Flower. Well, all the girls lined up and each girl was supposed to be named the flower, which was a farce. They wasn't. Whoever he come in, whatever flower he chose, nobody wanted to do it except me. Crazy, I didn't have a lick of sense. And I said, well, I'll do it. So he chose a flower, and he was going to kiss the flower. And when he did, I blowed his face, his eyes, and his hair full of flour. <laughs> so it was F-L-O-U-R. It was yeah. baking flour. <laughs> it was F-L-O-U-R to the F-L-O-W-E-R. Did you have a special place or a hiding place when you were a little girl? Well, uh, or did you have a secret spot that you liked to go to when you were a little girl? Well, not necessarily. Uh, I, I liked to hide in bed. I could slip under the bed, <laughs> hide under the bed. Now that was silly, but anyway. Tell me about the oldest person you remember knowing when you were a child. Well, <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. I guess my grandma um, Trotter's father and my great grandmother Trotter, Grandma Callie. We called her, but Grandma Kelly was my grandfather Trotter's stepmother. Tell me something about them. What do you remember about them? Well, my great grandfather um, come down here probably in 1911, 12, and uh, he first had the farm out across the bow that my grandfather later took over. My great-grandfather had Wiener Hotel. Okay, tell me about that. He, he ran the Wiener Hotel, and Dr. George Alcott came to Wiener as a young single man. He boarded at my, at my great-grandfather's hotel. And, you know, of course, he dated Mrs. Alcott and married her. Did you ever remember hearing them tell anything else about what things that happened at the hotel? No, I don't. Can you remember anything else about that hotel? Well, I remember as a kid that we kids couldn't go in the dining room because they had that dining room. I mean, it was pick and span and we dare not touch anything. We might move something. Mm -hmm. And the first time I got to go in that winter hotel and eat a meal, I was probably 10 years old. And my Uncle Paul Trotter, of course, Julia Hayden was his mother, 
Julia was my Grandpa Trotter's second wife. And Grandma Callie, his grandmother, was still living. But they never would let me eat in the dining room because I was too messy, you know, a kid. <laughs> yeah. And Uncle Paul met me and my grandpa up on the street up there in the front of the drugstore, Lassville's drugstore. No, I think by this time it was um, uh, belonged to the Kings. But anyway, so we went down there to eat, and Grandma was going to sit me down in the kitchen. And my Uncle Paul said, no, no. Oh, no, you're not going to. She's going to eat in the dining room with us. That was a first That time was a back. big deal, wasn't it? Oh, man, I thought, boy, listen, I'm in high class. Do you remember what you had to eat? Do you remember what kind of things I, they I don't fixed? Remember. Don't remember? No. Well, you have any idea how many uh, hotel rooms they had? How many rooms were in there? Well, uh, they was probably um, they was probably ten or twelve rooms upstairs, and downstairs, of course, was their living quarters. Okay. And the and the office and everything. What kind of, What kind of people would come stay in the hotel? The salesmen, they came, to, or they draw them drummers come to town, you know, to sell the merchants in town. Okay. They would stay there overnight, and sometimes uh, railroad people did, you know. Of course, I can't remember when the depot wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And I think it was there when my mother came. My mother came here in 1913. They came from Missouri. My mother was born in Missouri, but my dad was born in Illinois. Mm -hmm. So when we kids would always say, well, dad left Illinois, come to Missouri, and got his wife, and come to Arkansas, Arkansas. and got seven kids. Yeah, <laughs> and he did. What, when did. Do you know anything about why they closed the hotel or why it stopped? Uh, they stopped having the hotel? Well, it got to the point, you know, that that they had the highway, it was just graveled. Mm -hmm. And the drummers, as they called them, had mm -hmm. automobiles. Okay. And so there was no need to spend a night right. in the hotel. They weren't coming in on the trains anymore. Yeah, they could just come and go. Right. Uh, all right, I want to talk about Joe Bruner. Oh, dear. I want you to tell me everything you know about the Bruners. <laughs> and I got plenty of time. When I was a little kid, if I misbehave myself, they'd say, now, if you don't behave yourself, we'll give you the old Joe Bruner. And land, I was scared an inch of my life. He drove that old iron wheel wagon. And if I, I could see that wagon coming way down the road, and I'd go hide because mm -hmm. I didn't want Joe Bruner to get me. Mm -hmm. And they'd, <laughs> they'd tell me that when I was at home. If you don't behave, we'll give you the Joe Bruner. But when it come to town, it was a different story. I gave it the first nigger I see. <laughs> and I was scared to death. Now, <laughs> and I cannot remember uh -huh. what Joe Bruner looked like. I don't believe he was a very big man. I can't. You don't can't remember for sure. Um, I remember um, Mrs. Tom Bryant waited across the slough. I mean, Mrs. Bruner right across the slough to Mrs. Tom Bryant to tell that Joe had died. Mm -hmm. And she come down, and of course, my mother and dad was young. I was only, uh, maybe I was five. Mm -hmm. And dad hooked up the team, and we went over there. And there sat old Joe in his, in his chair, dad. Mm -hmm. huh. and, and the women got busy, and Miss oh, they had everything, the world canned and everything. They cooked, and everybody ate a meal over there. Now, that's what I remember mm -hmm. of. of did they lay him out? Yes, what, they, they laid they, him out. Where did they put him, on a bed? They laid the him out on a bed. Uh -huh. yeah. and, uh, course, did you see him when he was laid out? That's... I, I didn't remi don't mm -hmm. remember seeing him after mm -hmm. late. I, I remember him dead in his chair. That's now what that, you remember. That's what I remember. Yeah. Do you remember and, being really afraid and, when you and saw I, him? I don't remember going to the funeral. Uh -huh. I just remember him sitting. I guess that's first dead person I suppose I ever saw. Right. It was Joe Burner. You know his wife. 
come to Wiener and live with uh, Mary and Lee Smith. And they lived in a house up there about where Roy Wiles lives. But of course that house they lived in has been long gone, mm -hmm. you know. Hmm. Did but, you remember ever hear anything about that he was responsible for the death of his children? Yes. What was the story on that? Well, they told that he, that his kids didn't behave. He'd beat them to death, or he'd tie them to a tree, mm -hmm. and let them stand out there in the cold or mm -hmm. whatever. Oh, I guess he was mean. They said he was. Did you ever hear anything about him sticking his wife's hand in a meat grinder? Well, I heard that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now, of course, you know, I was little. You were little, and I and I don't really remember that. And I can't. I can't recall what she looked like. I know Mrs. Bruner come and lived with um, Lee and Mary mm -hmm. Smith. Mm -hmm. Lee Smith and people owned the big sawmill across the bow. Okay. Um, that sawmill, do you know where Harry Brown's old right. house is? I do. That sawmill was on the south side there. Do you remember there, seeing that the, uh, how big the trees were then? I know they, uh, I've heard that they were with some virgin timber here at one time, those great, great big trees. Do you remember ever seeing any of those no, big trees? No, I don't. I remember they had hitching posts, they called them, out back of the store. Of course, we mostly, when I was a kid, we mostly traded at day goods. And they drive the team around back of day goods in time to hitching posts, you know. And of course, like I told you, that, and uh, my grandpa would not buy me any candy. But he'd say, well, we'll go down to the drugstore, Last Wolf's drugstore, and he'd buy me a mug of root beer. Uh -huh. Now, that was my first drink, uh -huh. root beer. Uh -huh. But I didn't have to worry because Grandma would buy me some candy. Grandma <laughs> liked candy too. But Grandpa said candy wasn't good for me, so he wouldn't he buy. Wouldn't, he wouldn't buy you any candy then. <laughs> Did you ever hear ever remember hearing anything about Nancy that lived with the Bruners? Who? Nancy. Do you remember ever hearing about Nancy that lived no. with the Bruners? I, I don't recall. You remember that. that? Okay. Some people I remember. Uh, some people talked about that one time there was a clan. That was a, some of the farm men, if people didn't do what they were supposed to, the, the clan would go visit them. Do you remember anything hearing about that? No, I don't. Okay. Um, tell me about a good friend that you had when you were a child, a friend that you had that you liked. Well, <laughs> uh, I liked Beareth Bryant. You know who Beareth was? No. You know, do you remember Babe Bryant? I remember hearing of, of, of Babe Bryant. Well, Beareth was his youngest sister. She was from December to May, older than me. And Beareth and me were real good friends. You know, she had t twin sisters. Ruth and Ruby were twins. And the most unusual thing about the twins, Ruth had dark hair and dark eyes. And Ruby was a blonde with blue eyes. Huh, that's real, that is unusual. That's the most unusual thing. And of course, you know, Babe Bryant was their brother. Um, Aunt Sally and everybody called their mother Aunt Sally and Uncle Tom. And Lord of mercy, Aunt Sally had a whole herd of kids, you know. Bill Bryant lived in um, pits, in my earliest remembrance. There was Bill and Roy and Bryce, who had married my mother's sister, and Ethel. And then there was uh, Tobe and Fletch. <laughs> well, that's a bunch of children, isn't it? What would you and your, what would you all do when you played with your friend? Do you huh? Did you get to see your friend very often to play? Well, just mostly on weekends. What just would more. you all do for fun? What were some things that you played? Would play? with over the river. A wolf over the river? Or Auntie over the house, Auntie over the house. Did you ever play that? I did play that. I love to play that. Tell me how you play that. Oh dear, well, we just choose side. And I'd throw that ball around. Auntie, over, 
And if we caught that ball and we catch some of them going around the house, you know, while they were caught. And if you caught all of them on the other side, you won the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that would be a fun thing. That would still be oh, a fun. Oh, we run like a bunch of wild Indians. Do you remember a child that you didn't like? Do you remember a little girl or boy that you did not like? Tell me about them. <laughs> oh, Dickie Lawrence. All right, <laughs> tell me about Dickie Lawrence. Oh, <laughs> uh, Dickie Lawrence, I don't know why in the world he was in my class. <laughs> But this is sure, as he went by my desk, he'd grab something on my desk. Wasn't anything but a piece of paper, he'd get it. Uh -huh. And <laughs> I'd go home crying every night, oh, Dickie Lawrence got something. Uh -huh. Yeah. And <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever tell him how you felt about him? <laughs> well, after we got grown, it just, his, see, um, those children, their real daddy died, and their mother married again, a man by the name of Dunbar Waters. Mm -hmm. And so they give them kids away. Huh, oh. Uh, Dickie and his brother, Harold Tuggy, we call him Tuggy. They gave him to Uncle Charlie Grogin. Now, Charlie Grogin, you remember Slick Grogin? No, but I, I think I've heard that name. Well, Uncle Charlie, we called him. Uncle Charlie was Slick and him's daddy. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, then Dickie run off and come back to town to his mother. Well, see, she'd given the kids away. And their sister was given away, and they, they didn't see her That's until so she sad. was hmm. near the high school age. And she found a letter in her adopted parents' possession some way and found out her real mother lived here at Wiener. Hmm. And she wrote a letter to the postmaster here in Wiener to know if they were here. And she found out her mother still lived here. And now that's Pauline Ziegenhorn. Pauline Ziegenhorn married Oral Ziegenhorn. Okay, and that's who that, that adopted that, girl that was, daughter was. That was her mm -hmm. mother, um, Dunward Waters, the wife. And so finally Pauline come back and with her mother, Pauline graduated from high school with me. So did she live with her mother then after she yes, came back? Yes, she come and live with her mother, yeah. I wonder, did she ever say why she left her adopted parents? Well, she knew she was adopted. And I suppose a kid would be curious mm -hmm. to their yeah, own mother. I think so too. And she wanted to see her own mother. Mm -hmm. And she found a letter. Mm -hmm. So that's when she just decided and to come so on back. And so she wrote to the post office mm -hmm. here in Wiener, to and the found postmaster. That. And found that. And found that her mother mm -hmm. still lived here. Now we were, I guess, we were probably in ninth grade when, that, when, when she Pauline got, come back mm -hmm. here. Pauline, after she come back here, was one of my best friends. And only the funny thing about it, I really like Pauline. I still do. But I said, now, Pauline, don't ask me to go with Dickie. Because no. the... <laughs> I don't like your brother, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you never did like him after at all. Well, he aggravated me. Yeah. He'd go by my desk and he'd grab up something. <laughs> it didn't matter what. He'd grab it up. Oh, good. <laughs> tell, I want you to tell me a story about spending the night away from home when you were a child. <laughs> Can you think of a time when you had to spend the night well, away from Well, I'll tell home? you what. Uh, Ollie Cooper, that's Jimmy Cooper's sister. She was almost four years older than me. But I was the only little girl close in that neighborhood. So she'd beg my mother to go sail all night with her. And I remember us in the summertime out there, they had mosquito bars to keep the mosquitoes and eating it up. What was what was a mosquito bar? What was it? <laughs> it was a, a thing made of netting. Okay. And it just covered the bed on all four sides and up above us, okay. you know. Mm -hmm. And we'd get in under that on the bed to get out of the mosquitoes. Okay. <laughs> it, makes, it makes good sense. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh -huh. And we'd get in there and that uh, Mrs. Cooper was hard hearing. Now that's Jimmy Cooper's mother. Mm -hmm. Aunt Mary was really hard hearing. 
and we'd think we could get by with anything in there, but <laughs> this is sure as the world. She'd hear us. I heard she no, she wouldn't hear. I'm sure she didn't hear us, but she'd come peep in to see what we were doing. Uh huh. And catch us. This sure as the world. So she, you were supposed to be sleeping and you all were in there probably yeah. laughing and yeah. <laughs> telling stories. <laughs> we were supposed to be sleeping and yeah. we was can yeah. you, when you were a child, did your family, did y'all have Thanksgiving dinner? Do you remember ever doing anything at Thanksgiving? Oh, yeah, we always went to Grandpa's every Thanksgiving and every Christmas. And I remember one Christmas day, why my dad and Uncle Dorothy and my Grandpa and I don't know, some other men went deer hunting. And my Uncle Dorothy and my dad each one killed a deer on Christmas Day and brought it in there to my Grandpa Trotter's. And I think, I've, I'm not sure, Mama's, that might be in Mama's mm -hmm. pictures. Um, you know, Mama's house burned. Yeah. Did, but did, people gave her back pictures. Pictures, well, that's good. Did, that, they, did they cook those deer for that Christmas dinner? Did you eat them for oh, Christmas? Yeah. Oh, did yeah. Did you? Mm -hmm. Well, did. not that day, but okay. they skinned that deer out, and we ate that deer meat. Yeah, we did. What did y'all usually eat for Christmas dinner? Can you remember? Well, we always had chicken, mm -hmm. and we usually, they usually cooked the ham, the chicken and dumplings. Oh, we had to have chicken and dumplings mm -hmm. on Christmas and Thanksgiving, and they'd cook a ham. And we usually had, well, they had sausage. I remember when they butchered a hog, they'd grind up that sausage and they would cook that sausage and put it down in a stone jar and cover it with uh, lard, hmm. you know. And it would just be sealed over in that lard. And then when they wanted to get sausage later on, they'd dig, if it's already cooked, they'd oh, dig see. it out. Take it, take it out. Did you all get presents for Christmas? Do you remember? Yes. Did you? What kind? What do you remember getting for Christmas? Well, uh, the little girls would get a doll, and the little boys would maybe get a toy gun of a sort. And uh, where would they get the dolls from? Do you do you know? Have any idea where the dolls came from? No, I don't. I just wonder if they got them in town or someone they, made them. I, they ordered them from Sears and Roebuck, I think. It, they about everything was ordered from Sears and Roebuck. <laughs> I, I bet that was right. Do you Sears remember? and Roebuck and Montgomery Ward, they each had a big catalog. And it was a Chicago mail order was another mail order house where they ordered a lot of their clothes from mm -hmm. their stylish clothes yeah. that come from right. Chicago mail order. Did y'all do anything on Halloween? No, I can't remember okay. Halloween. I do remember um, one, time, <laughs> one time they had a jack-o'-lantern put it out on the gate post and somebody come along and threw things at it and just tore it all to pieces, you know. <laughs> when you went to high school, did they, do you remember anybody pulling any pranks or, or well, tricks? Well, when I went to high school, well, they usually had a um, ball game or something going on and so, you know, and of course, my first year in high school is when they built the first gym Wiener High School had. Okay. That was old man. Mm -hmm. But I remember the first basketball tournament that I remember having. I think I was nine, and we lived down this back this way from where Grandpa and Grandma Swartz lived. Mm -hmm. Now, that was uh, Connor and them's parents that lived down there. And they had a basketball tournament. And I wanted to come. I was only nine, but Mama fixed me up a lunch, and it was on a Saturday. And I come back up here to school and sat up here and watched that tournament. Mm -hmm. I had my lunch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that that would have been fun. Did, when uh, when you were a child, uh, did did y'all celebrate birthdays? Oh you, yeah. Did you? Or what did you do? How did they, you celebrate well, we just, birthdays? They usually? just made us a birthday cake and. And for the older people, not, not the kids, but for the older people, they'd have a birthday dinner, it'd be a potluck dinner. Everybody would take food in, mm -hmm. you know. Tell me about a birthday that you had that was your birthday that you always remember, something special. Well, when I think of my 16th birthday, well, um, 
Mama had a potluck dinner, and everybody brought dinners, you know, mm -hmm. brought something. And we had dinner, and of course we kids played. Now I was on about 13 or 14, I guess, when, when that happened. And Ben's brother bought me a little, and I've still got that little old bowl that she'd got out, a box of oatmeal. Oh, okay. And I've still got it. Uh-huh, huh. huh. Uh, I those bowls were, uh, was it glass? Was it clear? Oh, no, it was uh, whatever you call it. Um, you know what your dishes are made out okay, of. Okay, just kind of china looking. Yeah, china, it china right, looking. wasn't really china, but it was that type in hell. You know. uh, well, I've still got the little well, bowl. It must have been a good one then. It well, must have been a good one. I kept it put away and I didn't put it out because Ben's mother gave me that. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I've got to write on it. I've told the kids, but they probably won't remember. Yeah, where it came from. Yeah, and, uh, you, you then, definitely uh, need to do that. Tell me about high school. Tell me about when you were in high school, what that was like. <laughs> I tell you one time, we were having a math test. I believe it was I'm not sure. I believe it was the algebra test. Well, math was my best subject. I didn't have to take some semester tests in math, mm -hmm. but the rest of it, just forget it. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> math was my best mm -hmm. subject. Miss Fulbright was our teacher, and she put that on the blackboard. And she left the room. And when she come back, she just went down the aisle, did you copy, did you copy, did uh -huh. you copy? Uh -huh. Well, the guy that sat across the aisle from me, he and I always made top grades. If I right. And <laughs> so when it come and I said, well, he and I did not copy, uh -huh. but we did compare the answers. <laughs> Now that's and I don't know which one of us asked the other one, yeah. did you get such and such uh -huh. for an answer? Right. And we both had the same answer. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, oh, when the teacher come back, now the crazy thing was when the teacher come back in, that wasn't a math test, but we, oh. she did leave us for a test. And so, I think that was literature, either American or, or uh, the other. Uh -huh. I can't remember which. But we, the seniors, were in the class with the juniors for that. One year we'd have American literature and okay. next year the other. Teacher left the room. <laughs> I the see I later they go, yet. <laughs> we were all in the same class, her class and mm -hmm. mine, just a room full. together. So the teacher left the room, we was getting, so I later got up and she said, is anybody in here think they need to be prayed for before we get this test? And guess who went up? No, yeah. did. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I went up, you know, I had a platform. So I went up there and sat up there and uh, they were going to pray for me. Before <laughs> <laughs> you took that literature test? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me like y'all were acting a little silly. <laughs> No, we were acting silly. Yeah. And I laid a guy that said, well, brother and sister said, let's pray. And she <laughs> said, <laughs> brother McCulley, will you lead us in prayer? <laughs> oh, good grace. <laughs> and about the time they was getting down on our knees, here come Miss Fulbright. And there was no way I could get back to my desk. Oh, y'all got caught, didn't you? <laughs> so what did she do? <laughs> I just sat there. I couldn't get back uh -huh. to my desk. I uh -huh. had to run over somebody. Right. And she said, you know me, what are you doing up here? And I said, nothing. I wasn't doing uh -huh. anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, kids will be kids. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I think you're always doing something. Oh. And about the, oh, I, oh, I'll tell you this. <laughs> In a literature class, of just all girls. And Mr. Fulbright was our teacher. 
Uh, one day we went in there to class, and he come in there, and he had that top button of his trousers button, but that fly had. <laughs> he had his fly open. <laughs> And his white shirt tail was sticking out. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Just all girls right, laugh. Okay. I tell you, we giggled and we laughed. And he said, well, he said, I'll just leave the room and let you girls get over your tickle box. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, he left the room, wasn't anything to laugh about. Right, right. When he come back in, that <laughs> shirt tail was still sticking out. And here we started again. Uh -huh. Well, can't you imagine a bunch of kids? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Finally, I think he discovered what it was going on. Uh -huh. <laughs> it just had the top button and that. Uh, that is what? So yeah. Tell that No shirt. one would dare tell him, would they? Oh no! You wouldn't dare <laughs> tell him. Oh gosh. And finally, he come back in and had his zipped up, and he said, "We'll have the same lesson tomorrow." <laughs> Oh gosh! <laughs> uh, do you what? Tell me something. What was your? Where'd you go to grade school at? Huh? Where did you go to grade school at? My first term at school, I went up to a school they call Center Hill. It was between Stouffer Rock and Batesville. Okay. We were about well. I don't know how far we were from Stouffer Rock, but it was about nine miles out of Batesville. Okay. As we live one mile, if I've got my directions right, we will live one mile west of where your grandma cook lives. Okay, okay. And uh, uh, and uh, Marvin Wright went to the same school I did on top of the hill. He had to come by around where we lived to go to school. And from where we lived, we had to climb a hill go up there to school. Or when uh, did you go to school, uh, elementary school or grade school at Wiener anywhere? Did you, when y'all moved? Yes. Where did you go then? In the Wiener district. Uh -huh. I went to the old mommy school four okay. miles north of town. All right, who was your teacher there? Cara King was my first teacher out there. Now her brother was the uh, depot agent here in Wiener. What did that school look like on the inside? It was just a one-room school. Oh, uh -huh. it was, oh, I don't know. It wasn't a great lot bigger, but it was longer, you mm -hmm. know. Than this room? And mm -hmm. uh, Than this room. Mm -hmm. And that probably wasn't any wider than mm -hmm. this room. Because we had, I think there was four rows of desks in there. And those desks were double. Desks. Okay, right. Two. And uh, so that's that's where we were in there. And I started a school there in the second grade up there. Carr King was my mm -hmm. first teacher up there. And then uh, Ursa D. Good was my teacher there. And let's see. And then, uh, uh, oh, what was her name? By Newman, Louise Newman was my mm -hmm. teacher up there. I guess, did you walk to school there? Did you, oh, Dad yeah. take you? Oh, well, yeah. When I started school there, we lived on the Patterson farm. Do you know where the Patterson no. farm is? No, I, don't, I do not. Well, uh, if you go to... Was it, like, how far was it from that mommy school? How, do you know, did you have to well, walk a pretty good oh, ways? Well, uh, we lived in... Probably three quarters of a mile, not quite a mile from mm -hmm. it. The Patterson farm, well, it was a whole section. It was mm -hmm. a mile square. Mm -hmm. And the school, now the Sydney kids just crossed the railroad track mm -hmm. and went north down that old road. Mm -hmm. And that schoolhouse was about halfway there from where they crossed the railroad track to the next road, the way up the road. Now that was on the old road to Jonesboro. Mm -hmm. you know. That's where that one was located. That yeah. was where that was. Uh, tell me about a teacher you had that you did not like. Did you ever have a teacher you didn't like? I can't say that I did. Well, that's good. That's good. You like pretty much. Who was your favorite teacher you ever had? Well, you know, of course, I. they were my idols. Who is that? Oh, all of them? Yes, pretty well all of them. I remember Cara King. Now, she was my second mm -hmm. grade teacher. 
What did you like the best about her? What made you really like her? Well, I don't know. Um, I can't remember mm -hmm. exactly what. You just read respect, respect yeah, for yeah. them and just thought a lot of them. Uh, I'll tell you, I can remember. Now, this, don't please them. Mm -hmm. Oh, I better not. You don't want that on the recording. <laughs> I'll t when you turn that thing off, I'll tell you something. Off okay, of okay, you see, Missy. But Rural. I don't want that on there. My God, have mercy, somebody hear that. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll ask you when we turn the tape off. Uh, when you were a teenager, what, what, what were the things that teenage girls wore to look pretty? What was uh, what was in style? What kind of clothes did y'all wear when you were teenagers? Well, Mama always made my clothes, you know. And I remember we had long waisted dresses. Of the waistline would be down to, over the top of our head. Uh huh. And we had our dresses halfway down, like in between that. your knee and your ankle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, half socks come into the stall. They called them half socks, and before that, when we wore colored long stockings, uh -huh. but half socks come in the stall for summer, and them half socks would come just below the knees. And I was, and I still am, I, my mother said I was a fat baby, and I was always fat, and she thought that I was too big to have my knees showing. Mm -hmm. Huh, so she's not going to, didn't let you have the short dresses. So no, and uh, I had to wear long white stockings, you know, for mm -hmm. Sunday bed. Uh -huh. and <laughs> so did you ever get to wear the half socks? Well, finally, and Uncle Dorothy said when I was 12, we were still wearing half socks. They mm -hmm. came up to her knee. Mm -hmm. And Uncle Dorothy said, oh, for God's sake, Cora, she's just a kid. <laughs> So he decided to go in, she, he was saying she need to go in and let you wear those, huh? Yeah, he thought I could, should wear half socks like the rest of them. Yeah, that's right. Well, how, what were the hairstyles like? Huh? What were the hairstyles like? How were well, how girls wear their hair? You know, that was, there was no permanent waves. And the hair was straight like mine. It, mama parted my hair in the middle and I had bangs and she just, cut it sides this straight, mm -hmm. and she would clip the back. As um, they, they used to say, well, they'd cut your hair like a boy's behind, cut your <laughs> <laughs> Like a boy's behind? <laughs> I had never heard that expression before. Oh, had the hair cut like a boy's behind. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> I'll tell you this. <laughs> And of course, my mother, you know, I was, my mother was just 17 when I was born. She was young. And when I was, you know, I was not very old, 10, 11 years old. And the women started getting their hair bobbed. Okay. And of course, well, when I was 10 years old, my mother was just 17. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Young woman. Mm -hmm. So she wanted to get her hair bobbed, and my dad said, my dad's byword was, by Joe. Mm -hmm. By Joe, she gets her hair cut off, I'll just leave. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> that was just the teeth out. Right. But anyway, I remember, and I come home from school, and Mama had her hair bobbed. And I was so thrilled that uh -huh. Mama had her hair. You fixed. thought she looked pretty, didn't you? Oh, I thought so. Man, uh -huh. she looked like the rest. And my dad come in from work, <laughs> had an old model T Ford, drove in and went in and had his dinner bucket. He saw Mama and he didn't say hi to kiss my heel and nothing. Uh -huh. He set his dinner bucket off on the table. Out the door he went. And I was scared to death. Uh -huh. I didn't want Dad to leave. Right. And uh, <laughs> Dorothy was <laughs> out there. And she, I was afraid to ask Daddy uh -huh. where he was going. Right. But Dorothy did. Uh -huh. She wasn't school age. She said, where are you going, Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> Dad said, down to Uncle Isaac's. 
Uncle Isaac Trotter. That uh -huh. was my grandpa Trotter's uh -huh. brother. So I run back to the house. I said, come on, Mama. Daddy said he's going to Uncle Isaac's. <laughs> yeah, you're ready to go with him, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to try to get them together. So Will went and got in the car with him. Dad was just puffed up about like a blowed up toad. And it wouldn't talk to us, you know. Um, that's so, <laughs> but he I was afraid to ask that if uh -huh. Dorothy wouldn't. Yeah. See, she was yeah. younger. Yeah. She said, where are we going, Daddy? So did he finally get used to the haircut? Oh, yeah, he got over it. I bet and that was the end of the haircutting deal. Okay. Uh, well, my grandpa Trotter, oh, he was old-fashioned, and he wanted, he said, told Big Mama not to cut my hair. Mm -hmm. Leave my hair long. Well, at that time, I, that time I had three hairs, one on each side mm -hmm. and one in the middle. So Mama let my hair grow. She had it in braids, pigtailed. I, I looked aside, I don't know what they did. <laughs> and and <laughs> I wanted my hair cut, but no, sir, Dad, by Joe, I wasn't going to have my hair cut. Well, my grandpa and Grandma Hughes come here to visit. Dad come to Wiener and met the train. I got him out. And my grandmother didn't even get her coat off. Mm -hmm. She said, why, Cora, why on earth haven't you done something with that child's hair? Mm -hmm. Well, that's mm -hmm. terrible. <laughs> oh, makes you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just thrilled to death. Uh -huh. I was afraid oh. Grandma wasn't going to do that. And Dad said, by Joe, you better leave her hair alone. My dad is mother now. She said, never mind, Sonny. Mother will take care of that child's hair. Uh-huh. And she, she did. did. And she, she cut did. her pigtails off. Now she said, now, <laughs> Cora, I don't know anything about shaping up her hair, but I'll cut them pigtails off. And you can shape it up. <laughs> and, 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 she, and she did. She wasn't and afraid she of him. She, she wasn't afraid of him, was she? Oh, yeah. She cut she uh, she didn't care what Dad said. Well, she she, <laughs> she said this. Never mind. I'll take care of it. Uh, tell me, talk to me about what you remember about Grundins. About what? About Grundins. Oh my! Tell me your, uh, everything you know about Grundins. Well, I believe um, when I was about nine, when the Grundins opened, and it was just a big old rice pool. That's what it was. And everybody went up there, and people went in swimming. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, I never was in swimming there. Uh, I'd, I might have been when I was senior in high school, but I can't, I can't recall ever okay. being in. But I was only about nine, ten years old. We lived on the Patterson farm. Mm -hmm. And we'd see. What was up there when, uh, what was up at Grundins? Was there, you remember anything being up there besides just the, well, the swimming um, hole? You know, you had to. If you didn't have a bathing suit, you could rent a bathing suit. Huh. And they sold drinks up there, uh -huh. you know, and ice cream. Right. Ice cream and drinks, and and I think they sold hot dogs. Mm -hmm. I don't remember a hamburger, but mm -hmm. I remember a hot dog. Do you remember seeing a high dive board, uh, diving boards there or anything? Do you remember seeing those? Well, I remember them having a diving board, but, of course, I was too young, mm -hmm. and I, but I'd see. So you all didn't go up there very often at all? No. How many times you just didn't go up there? Well, we'd go up there a lot of Sunday afternoons just to see the crowd. Oh, just to watch? Yeah, mm -hmm. just to watch. Uh -huh. We never went in swimming. Was there I a, never you, was in swimming. Is there. that right? Was there always a lot of people up there? Oh, yes. Huh. Yeah. Everybody from town that come up there, see, that was the only swimming pool. Right. That was anywhere around? Uh, the side of Jonesboro. Uh-huh. Right. You had to go to, but oh my. Uh, that was something new, a public swimming pool. Well, yeah. we always had swimming pools. Like, why, where we lived, we had a big old rice pool in mm -hmm. the barn lot. And we kids would go out there and get in that thing. We had old clothes. Because what you went in that rice pool swimming to get yellow as gold if it was white. Oh, oh I hadn't even thought After about that. After so long a time. Yeah, I bet it would do that. It would. And did y'all ever, ever see any snakes when you were swimming like that? Huh? Did you ever see any snakes when you were swimming well, like that? Well, a few times we have, but not often did you ever see a snake. Huh? Do you remember going to the movie theater here in town? Oh, yeah. Tell me about the movie theater. Well, 
we'd come to town and uh, dad would go to the barber shop and my mother would take us kids and go to the show. I saw the comedy and after that I went to sleep. No. <laughs> I went to sleep, and my mother would lead me out of there and me asleep. Uh -huh. And I didn't never see a full-length picture until uh -huh. I was a teenager. Because uh -huh. when the comedy was all silent, uh -huh. silent movies. Miss Leela would come up there sometime to play the piano, and somebody would sing, you know. During before. while the movie was, silent yeah. movie was going yeah. on? But uh, the silent movies. And, of course, i just go to sleep. Well, uh, do you remember whenever they got movies that had sound? Do you remember when those, uh, do you remember going to your first movie that had sound where the people, you could hear people talking? No, I don't remember. remember. That? Mm -hmm. I was not very old when Grace Densmore put that theater in. And I remember that um, she, found out birthdays, everybody's birthday. And Grace would send the children out a birthday card. It was just a postcard, mm -hmm. now mind you. But we could bring that birthday card in and we could go to the show free. Oh, huh. Well, I bet. Could and you buy things to eat there? Could you buy popcorn and stuff like that? Or do you remember? No, we wouldn't. Was nothing to eat there? No, we just sat there. And like I said, when the comedy was over, it was silent. Mm -hmm. And I went to sleep. I remember the first movie I ever went to see. My aunt, my mother's sister, and why in the world she went to take me, I do not know, because I was five years old. Mm -hmm. But they brought us to town, and we caught the train, rode to Jonesboro, and my aunt bought her wedding clothes. My mother's sister married Bryce Bryant, Roy Bryant's brother, younger mm -hmm. than him. That's who my mother's sister married. Mm -hmm. And we went up there, and she took me with her. She bought her clothes while we rode the train up. We had to wait till the train come back south at night. And so she said, well, after we had lunch, we went to a cafe or a hotel. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Of course, I was a big-eyed kid. I thought that yeah. was something, you know. Yeah. And we went, she said, well, we'll just go to the show because they had to wait on the train. And when they come out of that theater, it was, of course, it was dark in there, and I went to sleep, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you, you thought when they turned the lights out, it was time to go to sleep. Yeah, when the lights went out, yeah. I went to sleep uh -huh. after the comedy was uh -huh. over. And when we come out, I don't ever get to say nothing. Oh, good, it's daylight. <laughs> you thought it was going to be nighttime. You thought you slept thought, all night. I thought I'd slept all night. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Do you remember going to anything at the Legion Hut? Do you remember the Legion well, Hut? Well, we used to have dances there. After I got to be a teenager, they'd have dances there every Saturday night. I remember Harold Corgirl over there, and he'd play that piano. Just, I don't know how in the world he could step there and play that thing. Huh, so they had dances there for teenagers on on Saturday nights? Yeah. yeah. What what kind of other things would they have at the Legion Hut? Can you think of anything well, else? Um, well, mostly dances that I remember mm -hmm. having there. So and when I, you were a teenager, y'all had, uh, what else did y'all do when you're, for fun when you were a teenager? Well, we'd go up to Legion Hut and dance. Okay. We'd go to the show or we'd game, well, you got my, picture work well that was my senior trip mm -hmm. and we just go out at somewhere and have a wiener rose mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we went up to um, oh what did they call that place we went up up the highway uh, and went off out there in, in the woods like I know the name of the place I'm just take time. we had a wiener rose okay so was it kind of like a, a place that had a lot of trees and stuff? Yeah, like well, it? it was, you know, it was just sort of out in the woods, mm -hmm. and it was clearing up there. And, well, that picture that mm -hmm. I showed you, well, we was wallowing around over there right. logs. Yeah. That, that's where we went. Uh, what kind of music did you like when you were a teenager? Do you remember any songs that you liked? 
Well, well, I like to hear them fiddle playing mm -hmm. and you know, guitar, right. but I, I didn't hear that much, you know. Weren't many but people they that was played that. Not, and I remember they had, we had an old phonograph that they'd have to wind up, you know, crank it up, and we've had the records that we play. Do you remember ever hearing anything about that, the Wiener Band that that Mr. Applegate came through? Do you remember ever hearing anything about Mr. I Applegate? I remember hearing the Wiener Band mm -hmm. when I was just a kid. And it seemed like Rex, and then with Rex down, and I can just remember Rex being in it. Mm -hmm. And I, Colliver was younger, you mm -hmm. know. But, um, oh dear. But you don't remember really what they would play at or anything? You don't I remember don't remember you were too young, probably. Uh -uh. Who taught you how to drive a car? Huh? Who taught you how to drive a car? Well, I mostly taught myself. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me uh, what happened. How, what, how did you get to drive? Well, I ran in the side of Mama's house. <laughs> did you just decide you were going to drive and just get in there I yourself? Decided, um, tell ben, me what. I, tell me about ben that. Ben didn't want me to drive. He said, "Well, I, I have no business driving. I'd get out somewhere, and it kill the kids. Have been all right, I guess. Would kill myself, but yeah. he didn't want to kill the kids." <laughs> But I, if he'd leave the car sitting there, and uh, I'd, uh, well, especially when he worked on the farm. Uh huh. And I'd get the keys and get out there and start it up, and I'd drive it maybe as far across this room and back and back it up, you mm -hmm. know. Uh huh. And I more or less taught myself how to drive. You just decided you were going to do it, didn't you? I just decided I was going to drive. <laughs> that is so funny. Uh, tell me about somebody that you really admired when you were young. Can you think of someone that you just really, really, really admired? Uh, well, I guess mostly who I played with is like Beareth Bryant and uh, Eloise Trotter. So you Eloise, admired those, your friends? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Eloise was... Eloise's daddy was my mother's own cousin, so we was way down the line. But Eloise and me, I was a year older. And you remember Juanita Sarri's mother, mm -hmm. Ruby Lewis? Mm -hmm. Now that we see their mothers and my mother were own cousins. Now Eloise's daddy was, he was all the trotter, all the boy that Uncle mm -hmm. Isaac had. Uncle Isaac had Ada and Alice and Harvey and Mary. And of course, my grandpa had my mother and her sister, Aunt Osi, and Uncle Orthy, and then Uncle Paul. Uncle Paul Trotter was Mama's half brother. And uh, oh my, I tell you, and Uncle Paul, of course, lived with his mother. Because she and my grandpa divorced shortly after he was born, and grandpa married somebody else. I couldn't ever remember to be any of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's your most vivid memory about World War uh, World War Two? Well, what was it like here at Weiner when well, World War Two? Well, you know, sugar was rationed, coffee was rationed. And, you know, you had to have a stamp to get that. Now, you could come to town and buy lard and, and flour and one thing or another, but now sugar and coffee, and that was ration, and you had to have a stamp. Well, I never did drink. I never did like coffee. Mm -hmm. So um, we could trade our coffee stamps for some sugar stamps, oh, so okay. we never suffered for uh -huh. them not having sugar for that mm. reason. But a lot of people did, you know, that drank coffee and they wanted, they used their coffee stamp. But I remember us trading stamps mm -hmm. with people. Did you ever, uh, did you have anyone that you knew real well that went to the war and, and died, that was killed in the war? Can you remember anyone? Well, um, 
a, there was a cousin that was Mama's own cousin, but he was my age, and he was killed in the Battle of the Bulls. Mm -hmm. He never, he was buried over there somewhere. Uh huh. Hmm. That was Mama's own cousin. Do you remember hearing about Pearl Harbor? Yes. What, where were you at? What do you remember when that happened? I don't where remember where were? it was, but uh -huh. I remember how awful it was, you know. And I remember when Buzz Fowler was killed, you know. Oh, listen, uh, I, I love that little Buzz Fowler. Mm -hmm. I was teacher's aide to get him and his class to the first and second grade. Uh, I had a teacher's license. Mm -hmm. See, when I finished the 10th grade, I went to Harrisburg and passed the test. Mm -hmm. And I had a teacher's license. Well, I'll be, I didn't know that. Well, I did. Mm -hmm. And I taught out at, out at Old Beautiful Home and around okay. like that. Mm -hmm. And then I was substitute teacher in Wiener, you know, if somebody was sick. Right. I went, because I had a license. Mm -hmm. And I remember. There was Buzz Fowler and Burl Smith and uh, Neil Leach, J.T. Buzz, Alan Walford, <laughs> and uh, oh, oh, that just that whole lineup. Mm -hmm. And I helped get them through the first and second grade. I was teacher. They, the teacher had 60 kids in mm -hmm. the first and second oh, grade. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I knew there were some big classes and at one time. Of course, I had teacher's license. Mm -hmm. And I, I'd go down there. And that's the way I paid my tuition. Mm -hmm. See, Dad moved across the bow and we was out of the district. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I paid my tuition to hmm. get to come to high school, was helping them kids. Somebody said something to me. I said, don't tell me anything about Earl Smith. Help that aggravating boy on my lap more times. <laughs> you had him on your lap more times than you could I couldn't to get him to get off. Get a lesson or nothing. I had to get him up and set him on my lap. <laughs> what did you do right after you got, when you got out of high school, uh, you said you substitute taught some. Did you ever have any other, do anything else? Or did you get married no, right not away? Really, did you get good. married right away? Yes. How, yeah. how old were you when you got married? At 20. 20? You were married then. So, so uh, uh, tell me about uh, uh, your, meeting your husband to be. How did that come to be? How'd you meet Ben? Well, I knew him all my, he knew me all my life, you know. Of course, they lived up in the Cumberland Haynes neighborhood, and we lived down here. And, uh, well, the McKnights lived way north of Cumberland Haynes, mm -hmm. way up in there, not, well, sort of um, northwest, northeast of the Walker Cemetery. Okay. Was. And I remember going up there to Ms. McKnight's birthday. They had a potluck dinner. I forgot. But it was a time of the year when grapes were ripe. So I don't know. They must have been August. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. But everybody went up there. My really... Um, I didn't see the McKnight's much. They didn't get out. You might see them go by, Lauren and Ben and Jim mm -hmm. and their dad in the wagon going to town because instead of coming this upper road, they had to go way down to the lower road. The upper road was always awful to get by, and they come down by our house. So how did y'all get sweet on each other? How'd that come about? Huh? How'd y'all get to be sweet on each other? How'd that happen? Well. <laughs> I was real good friends with his sisters. And they'd come down there and beg me to go home with them. And the mom would say, well, I had this and such. I had to get up. Mm -hmm. And they'd fly and help me get my work done because they said if I'd go home with them, Ben would take us. Mm -hmm. So I, I, that's when I said, how many times did you put them girls up to that? <laughs> So you weren't catching on very good, were you? No. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you, an, an awful incident. They was uh, having a fish fry down on the bow. Now, I wasn't dating, mm -hmm. you know. I was maybe 13 or 14. But having a fish fry down on the bow bank. They'd sang out fish, and they were cooking fish. And I don't know, Ben was out there helping him, and he drowned in the bowl. Hmm. 
And uh, oh my, one of his sisters and me was down the bank and we was picking blackberries and eating them right off the mm -hmm. vine. Mm -hmm. And we heard him screaming and yelling and went up there, oh, I said, let's get up there. They've got a big fish. Mm -hmm. Well, that wasn't a big fish. Ben had drowned. Hmm. And Ben Grogen had a pole and he felt, he felt him on the bottom of the bow. He stepped off in a deep hole. And hmm. it was, well, I said there was a few deep holes in that bow. Huh, and this was Ben who? Who was this? Huh? This was Ben who? Mike Mike. Oh, huh. Ben Grogen. Okay. Saw him go down. Okay. Ben Grogen. And he's, and Champ Peppner come along. He was a good swimmer. His brother finally married Ben's sister. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he dived down there and got a hold of him and drug him out on hmm. the bank. Hmm. And they gave him artificial respiration. And of course that uh, water gushed out of his mouth and mm -hmm. his nose and it was it was horrible. He mm -hmm. was sick for two weeks over that. You huh. know, so he did he got finally all, got over it then? Finally got that water all out of him uh -huh. you know, before it could breathe. Well he's lucky he lived, didn't he? Oh yeah. He was he wasn't breathing. He uh -huh. couldn't breathe because huh. his lungs were full of water. Hmm. Did he remember that as he when he yeah. got old he ever talk about it? He was sick. Oh, a couple of weeks he wasn't able to work mm -hmm. over that. Huh. Wow. He's he's lucky then, isn't he? So when when did y'all get uh, where did y'all get married at? At his brother's house. Lauren was JP. Okay. And we got married at Lauren Lauren Martha's. He wanted Lauren to say the ceremony. So they was having a revival at Cooper and Haynes and we didn't tell him about it. We was getting married. Oh mama. <laughs> mama and Daddy knew it, uh -huh. of course. Oh, thank mother. goodness. Yeah, they did. And uh, we went over to Lauren's and got married and Right before church, and then we all went back over to Coven Haynes to the revival. You went to the revival after you got married? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good way to start out a yeah. marriage, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, is there any kind of family recipes that you can remember are always served at whenever y'all have get together? Well, something that when y'all get I together. I haven't made it in years. Uh huh. But, and I was the one that got my mother to start making it. But I went to the, up to the McKnight's, you know, mm -hmm. I was buddy better with the McKnight girls. And Ben's mother would fix what she called, um, let's see, uh, egg butter. Okay, egg butter. All right, tell me what, that, how, what was in it and what it was like. Well, she would put a skillet of sarga molasses on and uh, while that was heating, she'd whip up a whole big bunch of eggs. Okay. Whip a raw eggs. And when that sarga molasses got to boiling, she'd pour those eggs in there and stir it up. And uh, they called that egg butter. Huh. And it was good. Did they eat it for, uh, they eat it for breakfast or they eat it for a dinner or like when would you? Well, we'd eat it whenever we had it. Just whenever you had it, huh? Yeah. So was that a little sweet tasting? Oh yeah, uh -huh. it was sweet. We'd, I'd put, well, we really liked it at breakfast when we had a hot biscuit with butter. Oh, with it sounds it. really good. Did you used to fix that for your kids? Yeah. Did you? Well, I'm, and it's called egg butter. I've never heard of that one before. Hey, that's what Ben's mother called it, egg butter. And she was the one that I remember eating it first. And I went home and I begged mama to make some. So some egg, some egg my butter. My grandpa, yeah. <laughs> My grandpa Trotter made sorghum. Uh -huh. Well, Mr. Walker did too. Uh -huh. Your grandpa made the sorghum meal. There was two sorghum meals out there, Ed Walker's and my grandpa. And so they grew sorghum and then they would uh, uh, yeah. run through the meal. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, people raised sorghum, you know. And the only time I ever had a strip sorghum, I was a teenager. And I had a hard chill out there. Every time I tried to strip a cane, I don't know what there mm -hmm. was about it. I'd have a hard chill. Huh, well, I'll be. That's strange. <laughs> I want you to tell me about the businesses that you remember being in Wainer, like you were talking about the drugstore. Yeah. Uh, if you could kind of pretend like you're walking through town, the way it looked well, then, you know, what businesses you know, were there? on the south side up there. Now, of course, it'd be on the south side, across from where the city hall is now. Okay. So there was the good store. And then there was um, Miss Snyder's, 
What did what was D Goods? What did they have? D Goods had general merchandise, okay. sold groceries, what any kind of groceries you needed. Okay. And I what could still see that big old uh, big old block, wood block. They had a big old round of cheese on, you know, you cut off. What did Snyder's have? What was in that store, Snyder's? Miss Snyder had um, embroidery thread and things to buy the embroidery and things of that sort. Now that's what Miss Snyder had. Okay, what was next to Miss Snyder's place? Well, that was the drugstore. Okay. And uh, when I was a young child, some people the name of Laswell had it. And then later, the Lankfords had it. What, uh, did they have anything in there besides where you could get drugs? Like, did they have like a soda fountain or oh, anything? Oh, they had a soda fountain. Each one of them had a soda fountain, you know, and you could buy cosmetics and candy and and the drinks they had was like Coca-Colas that they would fix in there and you could buy root beer. I remember that's what, my grandpa wouldn't buy me any candy, but mm -hmm. he would buy me a root beer. Mm -hmm. What well, what was next to last to the drugstore? Can you was there a store on the other side of them? Well, Lankford's took it over mm -hmm. after them, and I don't know whether they was related to the Lankford's that had. Yeah, I don't I know that. that they could have been, might not have been. That could have been. That could not have been. I don't right. know. Were there any other stores on that south side? Yeah, so there was Day Goods, and then there was Miss Snyder's. There was a drugstore. There was L. T. McDaniel and Son down there. What was that kind of? What was, did they have? They had general merchandise. They had all kinds of groceries and feed, stock feed, and what have you down there. Were there any other stores on that side, or was that the last one on that side? That was about it. What about across the railroad track? There, what on the was, east side. Yeah, what was over there? Was there anything over there? Well, at first, uh, Franklin Huber's store was over there. Where did it sit? Was it was it on right the corner? Right where, where the old flower shop. Okay, so that was Franklin's. That did was he, Franklin's store. Did he have it? What did he have? Huh? What did he have? Groceries, a general line of groceries. But if they give me a nickel, I wanted to go over to Franklin's store because I'd get a bigger sack of candy <laughs> for my nickel over oh, there. A bigger candy. What Kids. was what was next to Franklin's? Huh? What was what were some of the other stores on that side? Well, there wasn't any. Okay, so Franklin was the only one over there. Mm -hmm. All right, you talked that about that post office was over there. Okay, there was a post office over there. Well, now at first the post office was in was in the. Um, drugstore, you know, on this side of town. Okay. But then they moved the post office. Okay, so it was uh, there Ms. first. Miss Leela, I remember, it seemed like Miss Leela was the first one in the post office over there that I remember. That member. Where the hotel, where was the hotel at? Where did that sit? Well, let's see. Like where, uh, where the is, hotel okay. was down there about where um, uh, not for the lumber, you know, burgers. Have. Okay, yes, where the lumber company used to be. Mm -hmm. That was the hotel. Okay, yeah. what was, I've seen old pictures of the hotel. There were some other businesses around that hotel, weren't there? Some other places? Well, Frank Casper's well business was on the south side of it. Okay. And uh, I don't, and there was a barber shop. Oh. Where, where was that? Was that Gilmore's? No. Okay. That was um, Oh. Mr. Bain, Fleekla Walker's daddy. Fleekla Walker's daddy. I remember Fleekla. Was a barber. And what was his name? Bain? I don't know what okay. his given name was. All right. Well, his last name was Bain. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember uh, there being... Um, I remember seeing a picture of the hotel, and when you came, uh, I guess which would be coming back west, it looked like there was a big white building next to it that was another type of merchandise store that, well, that was Downing's. That was St. Casper's Well Business. All right, but there was a doubt. Uh, uh, Great Grandpa Downing had something there because it said on the side of in this picture it says everything you need. 
Do you remember that one at all? No, I don't. Uh, okay. Uh, tell me about, do you, uh, do you remember Sophie's Dime Store, Sophie Schischler's? Oh, yeah. Sophie. Uh, Sophie's? Sophie had that. And, uh, well, Sophie had a little old platform that we kids would stand up on to look, to pick out our candy, you know. Of course, um, I was a good big kid once, you know. That would be lighter on after oh, this. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, Miss Densmore had a little old place inside the theater that she first started selling stuff. And then, well, she she's the one that had that first store that Sophie okay. was in. She, oh. So she sorry. had that store first. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Sophie then got the store and she kind of turned it. Uh, into Sophie got the store from her. Okay. And Miss Densmore, Marshall Densmore, you know, her son, mm -hmm. married, I was trying to think. His wife come to Wiener and taught school. And he married her. Her name was. I could have seen her in my mind, but I can't remember her name. Oh, what about uh, Miss Allen's? When did she open her dress store? You remember Miss Allen's? Oh, yeah. Laverne, her oldest daughter, graduated from high school with me. Okay. Well, tell me what you remember about Miss Allen's. Well, Miss Allen, you know, had that, well, she sold material and she sold dresses. And that was up there next to Roy Bryant's place. You what know. did Roy have in his place? What was he his? had a soda fountain? Okay. He sold ice cream and was his a drugstore also, or was it just a soda fountain? Well, he didn't have drugs in okay. there. It was just the soda fountain. Mm -hmm. I, I think probably he got that soda fountain from the Lankfords when they left Wiener. Okay. Because the Lankfords had a soda fountain on the south side of town and when they left Wiener then Roy Bryant got that and why oh my you know it was there was quite a few businesses up there wasn't it at one time everybody come to Wiener on Saturday night and like I said the men loafed in the drugstore I mean in the barber shop and the women loafed at Sophie's before Sophie, when I was a kid, the women loafed at Miss Snyder's on the mm -hmm. south side of town. And Miss Snyder had, oh, she had a dress. Well, not really. She had material uh -huh. to make. What would the kids do? Huh? What would What would the kids do while the grown-ups were at the barber well, shop? Well, they just had to sit there and, and behave themselves as they could. It was pretty rough on us. <laughs> hey, I can remember Mama <laughs> telling me to be quiet. Were there, you said there was a, a couple of barber shops. Were there any places to eat besides the hotel? Was there any places you could go I in and get a meal? I don't remember that being, well, at the drugstore, you could get something to eat. Okay. And uh, I remember when I was a kid, I think I was in the fifth grade. And I was nine years old. We lived down this, this side of where, um, S.B. Swartz's grandparents lived, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> oh dear, Grandma Swartz, uh, L.G. Swartz, that's S.B.'s cousin, S.B. wasn't even dreamed about at uh -huh. that time. Right. That L.G.'s folks brought him to his grandparents to stay so he could go to the Catholic school. Elgie was seven, I was nine, and Grandpa, Grandma Swartz asked Mama if she care if her little grandson walked along to school with me. Mm -hmm. We walked down that old dirt road so we got down about where Schistler's Uncle Mike and him live, and then we'd get on the railroad track. And Uncle Mike, Sometimes he'd hook up his horse to the buggy and he'd sit there and wait till we got there and then he'd let us ride the rest of the town. If not, we'd walk down the railroad track with Uncle Mike and I couldn't understand. Or, I know. <laughs> and I could just hear Uncle Mike saying, No, no, little girl. No, no, little girl. You don't mean uh huh. You mean uh uh. But little girl, then what is that?
<laughs> I, I, I remember he always was fun to hear what I understand. just see Uncle mm -hmm. Mike get. <laughs> now, I was just nine, ten years old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and after I was grown in high school, if Uncle Mike see my dad, where is my little girl? I don't see her no more. You know, he just, that's the way you talk. Yeah. I have a little girl. <laughs> the little girl but grew up. <laughs> Uncle Mike didn't realize that I was getting grown up, you know. So he would bring you to school sometimes. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's neat. You know, he'd have his horse hooked up to the buggy. Come on, little girl. You could ride with me once. And <laughs> So did your mom and dad, or your parents, and the and the yeah. Miss Swartz, did they know that he was bringing y'all on into school? Oh yeah, yeah. They knew he was bringing y'all into school. Oh dear, I tell you, what. Uncle Mike. Here I'm you gonna know, switch. I'm gonna switch. I don't